Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolithes at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this last match today is going to be between Anir and Gaiop on Conquest of Paradise, which. Man, I forgot how pretty this map is. It's pretty. Wee. Sorry, it's just. It is quite pretty. It's. I mean, I guess you could. I don't know, it's not really that basic. Actually, it's quite nice. There's only a couple textures, but they're used really well. And then it slides off nicely and looks like an island. I like it. Anyway, I haven't seen it that much, but it's pretty. Anyway, Gaia going for Gunship Plant, and Anir going for Cloaky Bot Factory. This is typically more of a 3v3 map, or 4v4 map, as you can see by the four clusters of three metal extractors. But today, Bling played 1v1, which I found interesting enough to try to see how it played out. I mean, these players are high enough level, I figure that, or at least high enough elo, I figure that it's going to be relatively interesting. Banj is coming out immediately from Gaia. And you're going for the early production or early worker. As mentioned last game, workers are quite effective for this sort of thing. I mean, th this sort of thing being large maps. Larger maps make workers starting out much more effective because it's harder to deal with them, harder to harass them. On a smaller map, you're going to get harassment right out of the gate, half a minute in. On a larger map like this, you're usually not going to get harassment for a minute or a minute and a half. So building up that early worker is far more effective than trying to build harassment units. Because if you try to go for it and your opponent just goes for economy, they're probably going to be able to build the defenses in time. But anyway, the early glaives coming in from and you're trying to figure out where guy up is. That's the one thing to start out, is that this entire area here is open to starting. So... At this point, neither Anir nor Gaiop know where the other is. Anir is assuming that Gaiop is in the closest position, checking that out first, and no other queued movement. So at this point, Anir, I'm not sure where they're going to go. If they go for the other center position, they'll be fine. If they go for the north, or, if they go for the north first, that'll give Gaiop so much time that at this point, Anir's at this point as it is, Anir's going to have a tough time. Like Anir just now seeing the two Banshees come in. No, not even now. Oh, no, they are. It should be on radar. Yeah, it was on radar, but still. Two Banshees coming in. One being knocked out, or damaged, not knocked out, just slightly damaged by a defender, which is going to get finished off? Yes, so one got, at least one of them got trounced, but the other one's still alive, still getting rid of metal extractors. More defenders coming out, and strafing into the defender range. That Banshee committing suicide to get rid of radar. Three wind generators being lost, that's a big deal. Though the solar pan the solar plants, solar panels, solar collectors being set up, that was good. That'll give Anir a lot of room to recover. At this point, they don't have an energy deficit. On the other hand, Anir did actually during that fight find Gaiop's base. Didn't do much, but did find it. So both players know where the other are. And at this point, we should probably start seeing either Oh, we are seeing Gremlins. I was gonna say either gremlins or warriors. But no, it's going to be gremlins. And at this point, Anir is building a lot of gremlins. So I'll give them that. They're building a lot of gremlins, and that is kind of what you need against Banshees. That's all you can really do if you're going to use gremlins. I still think warriors are a better option. The problem is speed. But warriors get rid of Banshees no problem. Like, it's... Any riot unit usually does a good job against Banshees because Banshees tend to clump up and tend to hang around. But, of course, being that they're fast, most anti-air units, or at least gremlins, don't have very high alpha, so Banshees don't hang around long enough to get hit, and a lot of bot anti-air doesn't have huge alpha. The best one's probably the Amphibious Angler. And even then, that's not super awesome. For alpha, like for raw damage, there are better options in general, but for straight alpha, like, you get four missiles out of the gate, that deals a lot of damage for the Angler. For the gremlin, though, it's the laser beam. You need to have about three or four of them next to a Banshee for about three seconds, because if you look at one of them, DPS is 61, and the Banshee has 860 health. So three or four of them are needed to hit the Banshee for about three seconds. I say three seconds because if a Banshee is right below a Gremlin when a Gremlin starts attacking, or right above a Gremlin, rather, when a Gremlin starts attacking, it'll take about three seconds for the Banshee to exit the Gremlin's range. So a Banshee in range of three or four Gremlins, and the Gremlins are on hold fire... They are not in hold fire, by the way. These gremlins are firing at will. But if they're on hold fire and coming in right below the Banshees, sneaking up on them, basically trying to just surprise kill the Banshees, the ban a Banshee will die to, like, three or four gremlins that are all in range, like, all right below the Banshee. That Banshee will not escape in time. 
But that's a lot. That's a tall order. I mean, that's 600 metal worth of anti-air to get rid of 220 metal worth of air unit. Gremlins are not the option best used here. The best option is usually considered to be warrior. Although it looks like we're just seeing instead swifts go for anti-air, air-based anti-air. That's not a bad idea. Swifts really don't do. Actually, Swiss do well against this. They have high enough alpha, they can deal with the Banshees. And the Banshees basically can't deal with them back because, well, what's the laser going to do? The Swiss get out of the way. No big deal. This Banshee is... No, it's... Wow. Took it out. Okay. So, Banshees can't be too careless around Gremlins. They are pushed away. That is the one thing Gremlins do. They push the Banshees away. That does help. At this point, though, what Gaiob's doing isn't trying to deal damage. Gaiob's trying to put pressure on Anir. And also trying to kind of fo force Anir to focus on air while expanding a lot. Anir, to their credit, is also expanding. They're not letting that go completely unanswered. But yeah, Gaia's basically using all of these Banshees to cover their expansions. And at this point, to an extent, they've kind of succeeded seeing as Anir's going straight for air. Although now, we could see Anir going for a bunch of Ravens to get rid of the Metal Extractors directly. Or go for... Well, obviously, go for a Vulture. They should just go for a Vulture regardless. Go for a Vulture, get that scout, and get to know what exactly your opponent's up to. Super important. That is so unbelievably important that you know what your opponent's up to. The Swifts do help a lot, though. So the Swifts are working well as a scouting force. But going forward, Anir should consider that if the Swifts start to go away or they start to focus more on bombers. Interestingly, the Swifts are focusing on dealing with ground, which I don't agree with. Especially not when there's a defender right there. I, I'm a bit surprised that there's no attacks going to the center, the main base, where the Wasp is. That's helping construct tridents, which will get rid of these Swifts if that goes on. I mean, Anir's clearly trying to get rid of the Metal Extractors. That, I can see. I just don't agree that that's the best approach. Also, yeah, Anir... Well, Anir and Gaia both need energy. People are pointing out in the chat, Anir's e-stalling. So is Gaia. Both players are actually stalling energy. They need a lot of energy. So right now, Gaia not being dealt a huge amount of damage. Once Gaia, if and when Gaia gets some energy up, okay, there they go, getting solar plants up. Then that'll be a problem. And nice boost there. Very nice boost. The Swifts have their boost ability is really handy for getting out of the range, things like Tridents. Or anything, really. That's the whole point. Get out. And then survive. And then get back in later. Oops. Oh, they're not even damaged. That's just their boost fuel that's regenerating there. Oh, this one is. Never mind. Okay, they do regenerate. I wasn't sure if Swifts actually had out-of-combat regeneration. They do. Relatively weak out-of-combat regeneration, but it's there. Yeah, so at this point, Anir, with the economic advantage, Gaia, despite the fact that they were probably trying to use the Banshees to cover an economic expansion, or cover their expansions, didn't really amount to much. I mean, they didn't expand over to this full north area here, and did not have the energy economy to really make the metal work. And now at this point, when I mean, they're going for shields, going for thug, probably thug outlaw ball, I don't see that doing much, though. Like, Gaiab's lack of energy has pretty much sealed their fate at this point. And slight carelessness, I guess, on their part. It's just kind of unfortunate. Although, one thing that Gaiab could... No, it can't really do. That's the thing. With all these Swifts out, Gaiab can't try to harass their way into a good economy because they can't harass their way into getting rid of these wind generators. The wind generators that Anir has, that's a lot of Anir's energy up until the fusion plant gets made. But the Banshees can't deal with it. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to get killed by Swifts. That, that's exactly what's happening right now, in fact. And with that, Anir getting the confidence, pushing in the Glaives towards the Shieldbot Factory, and of course, Anir knows exactly what's here. We'll be able to get rid of it, no problem. So the Glaives, they're going to die in the process. They might, I think they're going for the Commander. Yep, going to kill the Commander too. And actually, wow, three survive. Yeah, that's enough to get rid of the base. The Thugs can't stop them. There's no defenses to stop them. I mean, the Thugs can only stop them if they're stationary. And unfortunately they are, but that pretty much does it. Guy up, unfortunately, despite the fact that they started out with that really rapid expansion off of the harassment, did not manage to capitalize on it, and both players with their excess did not help. I mean, both players had that, but Anir had so much more metal used. 
and ultimately had the larger army, of course. I mean, midway from the game, they had the larger army with the anti-air. And given that Gaiob's entire force was air, they switched to shields fairly late. There wasn't much that could be done there. I mean, good killing on Gaiob's part. They really harassed well. They just ended up not really being able to capitalize on that. And then given that the energy economy and both players stalled, but Anir had a stronger economy to begin with at that stall. It was 34 energy compared to 15 energy. Anir's economy was double that of Gaiop's for most of the game. And once the Swifts were out, Gaiop could not use the Banshees to harass. And since Anir knew that, well, Anir just rapidly expanded across the map, making use of every single metal extractor on that half, or just about every single metal extractor on the west half of the map, except for these southeast ones, or sorry, southwest ones. But otherwise, yeah, and Gaiop is getting very few. I feel like this map actually has some potential 1v1, though. Because, I mean, yeah, gunships came out and did a lot of damage, which is typical on large maps, but this actually worked out okay because, yeah, they came out and did some damage, but they were also dealt with pretty effectively. And then, at that point, a ground switch would have been necessary, and the way the map is set up, there's actually a fair amount of room for ground just because it's big, but the rush distance can be small given the way the bases can be set up. If you know where your opponent's main base is, you can set up right across from it. But yeah, it really came down to, it. once again, economy there. Which is one of those things, I mean, the game is very economically focused. It's more the case that if you're playing against someone who's roughly the same skill level as you, you need to have a stronger economy. Because if you have the same strength of economy, well, okay, either str as strong or stronger. Because if you have the same strength of economy, then it comes down to micro and unit choice. If you have a stronger economy, then you can have a few more mistakes. And if a weaker economy, you're probably not going to be able to micro your way out of that box. You're going to need to have more economy. Otherwise, you're not going to have the unit count to be able to succeed. You're going to have to out micro your opponent, who is probably around the same skill level as you, so probably has the same micro abilities as you, especially when you're dealing with like 1800, 1900 LO players like these two here. It is not easy to deal with that. But anyway, that is that is that. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good night.